as the summer has finally arrived here in the UK. Yes, it may only last one or two more days, but us Brits know that we must appreciate every single second of it before winter rolls around in August. If you watch my latest barefoot video, how to transition to barefoot shoes, you'll remember that I have already experienced reoccurring knee pain due to wearing flip-flops on a walk that was a lot longer than anticipated. My flip-flops are my final pair of foot attire that are not barefoot, and now that the sun has his hat on, this is going to be an issue. A quick Google search for barefoot sandals gave me a pretty solid selection of sandals to choose from. There was just one problem. As I mentioned previously, I currently live in the UK. Buying flip-flops is like buying a suit. It's good to have one, but it's unlikely you're going to get regular use out of it. Most of the barefoot sandals were around 40, 50, even 60 quid, except for these beauties I found at Decathlon, the 4 class sandals Trek 500. They are not labelled as barefoot shoes, but looking at the pictures and reading the reviews, they appear to be a minimalist zero drop sandal. Reading the reviews is very encouraging, however the thing that stops this from being a true barefoot sandal, the toe box not being quite wide enough as mentioned by some previous buyers. There are also a few mentions of the straps being uncomfortable, but I won't know for sure unless I try them myself. So for this week, I'm going to be putting these barefoot foot sandals to the test and be using what I always do, wearing them as much as possible, feeling like how comfortable they are, how the durability is, if they hurt my feet, how I feel they look and yeah I just need to drop online and order some right now. Oh, I think that's the door. Very quick service. So the very minimalist look, we got one strap at the front which I guess is the one people said is a little bit too tight on the toe box and then a strap at the back to hold your foot in and yeah the bottom kind of has these like grips on and yeah they fold they do the the barefoot fold so I guess all there is to do is try them on first First opinions, they feel, they definitely don't feel tight around the toe box. I feel like I'm kind of from the olden times, like a very basic simple shoe, but yeah, kind of just enough to protect the bottom of our feet, which I kind of guess is the purpose of shoes. So yeah, that's going to be it for the intro. So yeah, it's going to be a fun week as always, and I put them to the test, wear these non-stop for the next seven days, and then yeah, I'll get back to you guys, and I'll see you guys in a week. Hello, so it's the end of the week and I'm finally ready to review the Decathlon Minimalist Sandal. So let's jump straight in with first impressions. Putting the sandals on was a bit of a new experience for me. I've only really worn flip flops, which I believe the difference is having the material between your toes hold your foot in place rather than the ankle and toe strap. As often I find with new footwear, they felt a little awkward to begin with and I was very concerned about the toe box as I could see my little toe squidged against the edge. Don't get me wrong, the toe box definitely isn't narrow, however after not wearing regular shoes for over a year my feet are nearly as wide as they are long. Well almost. Loretta, who has wide hobbit looking feet, also has the same sandals and her feet had more than enough room in the toe box so this is definitely on a foot by foot basis. Apart from the toe box, they felt really great, I've kind of felt like a Roman soldier and I was really happy with how they felt and looked. On our first walk, I couldn't decide if I liked them or not to be honest, they felt a little strange and the ground felt very hard underneath, which is strange as I'm used to wearing barefoot shoes but the ground felt extra hard underfoot. It could be a thinner sole than what I'm used to, I'm not sure, it's hard to measure. Once again, Loretta did not experience this when wearing her sandals so it really goes to show that we're all unique and we should only really use these reviews as a guideline however as the week went on I began to get used to the feel of them the straps and the firmer base began to feel a lot more comfy I even just started leaving them on when I was in the house one because they are light and comfy and two because taking them off requires bending down and undoing them rather than just kicking them off so keeping them on seemed like the easy option I do also like to just pop in and out of the garden so leaving them on definitely had its advantages the biggest factor I needed to explore was if my knee pain would reoccur on longer walks which is what was happening with my crocs and to my pleasant surprise it hasn't happened so far. The zero drop now seems like
like a non-negotiable for me, as any form of arch support really plays havoc with my knees. My little toe brushing against the side didn't actually cause any discomfort or pain, even if it looks slightly uncomfortable. Buying barefoot specific shoes means you can usually alleviate the problem with the toe box, but to make up for the toe squishing, I gave them a good stretch in the evening. For good reference, I wear mine in an EU42 and I measure the toe box at 102 millimeters, whereas Loretta's is an EU40 and hers are 100 millimeters wide. Overall, for the price of 19.99, I don't really have any complaints. I've lived in them for the past week and got plenty and plenty of steps in. There have been no pain and it now feels like I have nothing on my feet. They feel so light that it doesn't even feel like the straps are holding them when you walk. I don't mind the look of them and they do appear to be very well made from recycled materials nonetheless. Would I recommend these sandals? 100%. They're perfect for what I need, a summer sandal for the three days of summer a year. The closest comparison I could find online was a Zero Shoe Z Trek. The Decathlon sandal weighs 178 grams per foot whereas the Zero weighed at 187 grams, so not much in it. However, the Zero do have the wide toe box and an extra strap for added support, which is probably better if you're doing more adventurous hikes or running, and they are something I may consider getting in the future to get the true barefoot experience. These sandals, though, are three times the price. They are probably worth it if you're using them more regular for more serious hikes, or if the ball width of your foot is super wide. My typical sandal wearing days are usually just walking from one barbecue to another or just along the canal, so I think these will do just fine for me right now. These may not be a true barefoot shoe, but they have a zero drop and they're a minimalist shoe and they bend and flex with your feet following its natural movement. The toe box is wide, however not quite wide enough for us mega wide footed folks, so this is something to keep in mind. But for the price, I haven't seen anything like it, so they're light and compact for £20, you can have a pair in your bag, taking up space ready for your next sweaty footed adventure. For those of you that are interested in the production of the sandals, it states online that the materials are of European origin and that the sandals are made in Portugal with the sole and straps being made from recycled materials. 100% rubber sole with polyester straps. Decathlon also backs its passion for brand forecast with a two year guarantee on their products. From this perspective, it doesn't seem like I had too much to lose trying them out. I also used to work in Decathlon back in the day and it's a very reputable company and I highly recommend them. So that's gonna be it for the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've got yourself a new pair of minimalist barefoot sandals for $19.99. So yeah, that's gonna be it. Drop it a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.